center chambers. Thanks, Senator McCain, for continuing to lead this effort. Um, I've now been involved in the intelligence community for in excess of 10 years. I've dealt with intelligence uh, leaders who are partners of the United States in virtually every part of the world. And I can just tell you that our partners are very concerned about what's happening in Washington right now with respect to these leaks and the reaction of the administration to these leaks. We've never, even though this town is known for having leaks from time to time, we've never seen the number of leaks coming out of the intelligence community, nor have we seen the level of um, um, uh, the leaks that are uh, now being reported in virtually every paper in the country, it seems like almost on a daily basis, even though it may not be. But, you know, for the President of the United States to come out and say that it is offensive to him to think that his White House would intentionally leak uh, classified information, frankly offends me to no end. What the President ought to be saying is that this is very damaging to the country. And we're going to do everything we can to get to the bottom of it, whether it involves my White House or wherever in the intelligence community. But for him to be politically uh, offended by this makes no sense whatsoever from a national security perspective. Let me, uh, let me just quote some of the statements that appeared publicly in these articles and in a couple of books that are out there right now. First of all, President Obama is quoted from inside the Situation Room. Now, the Situation Room is located in the White House. You do not go in the Situation Room unless you have the highest classified rating. So somebody within that Situation Room who is associated with the National Security Council obviously is quoting the President. Secondly, Obama aides quoted as to what transpired in the Situation Room. Senior administration officials were quoted time and again in these articles. The National Security Advisor is quoted as talking about a covert action program. Now, we as members of the Intelligence Committee can't even confirm whether these programs exist, and yet you have the National Security Advisor talking about a covert action program. Three dozen current and former administration officials within the intelligence community were interviewed, according to one of the articles. David Axelrod, who is not a part of the national security team, was apparently in the Situation Room on a number of occasions. This is a political advisor to the president. And then lastly, the deputy national security um, advisor, John Brennan, goes on Good Morning America. And he's quoted as saying, we had the device, talking about the, the bomber, we had the device under control. Folks, this is all classified information. And yet we have folks in the White House going on TV and talking about it. Now, while these are part of news stories, these are direct accusations towards the White House with respect to the source of the leak. Some of them are pretty direct, some of them are indirect. Now, we all know that this town is about politics, but this is not about Republicans pointing the finger at the White House. These are news reporters, just like you folks in this room, very professional, but out to get a story that's quoting White House officials on disclosure of classified information. Now, I have no question about the competence, the integrity, or the capability of the two U.S. attorneys who have been um, nominated now by the Attorney General to investigate, and this is important, to investigate only two of the supposed leaks. One, the Iran uh, issue on, on um, the interruption of their uh, gaining nuclear capability, and secondly, the issue of the um, underwear bomber. There are other leaks in addition to that, and if you notice what DNI Clapper said yesterday is that he has asked his IG to investigate those scenarios or those leaks that the Attorney General is not investigating. Now, do we really think, in spite of the capability of these two U.S. attorneys, that when you have somebody who is appointed by the administration 
Are they really going to be unbiased in their investigation of the administration that appointed them? One of these individuals apparently worked on the Obama campaign, was involved in the vetting of the vice president's selection. So they are not, he was not just a casual volunteer in the campaign. He obviously was a pretty important member of that campaign team. Um, you know, I was told by Attorney General Holder when he called me Friday two weeks ago to say that he was going to name these two U.S. attorneys to do the investigation, that if during the course of this a conflict of interest developed, then he would consider the appointment of a special counsel. Well, guess what? The more we find out about the folks that are going to be doing the investigation, the more common sense um, uh, uh, determination is that there is a conflict of interest today, and because that conflict of interest exists, that a special counsel should be appointed. Uh, Senator Cornyn.